this right here is the Yeti SB130 Lunch Ride. And today, I wanna to break down a little bit of my thoughts and opinions of this bike, having ridden it since March of last year. I wanna thank both Jensen USA and Yeti Cycles. Through Jensen, I was able to get a hold of Yeti and arrange for this loaner bike to be sent out here for me to ride. So thanks guys, I appreciate it. Um, I am supported. Who is this? What are you up to? Where are you going? Are you gonna go mountain biking? Have fun. Bye. Well, the bike's not gonna be behind me while I'm talking about it. We just brought one bike to share. She normally rides a small. This medium fits her close enough, so she's happy with it. I wanna be fully transparent about any perceived biases about where I'm coming from. So I do have a few industry sponsors. I am proudly supported by my friends over at Industry9 and PNW Components. In addition to that, Jensen USA arranged through Yeti Cycles to send me a loaner bike. So I did not buy this bike, I have to send it back. Um, but I'm not sponsored by Yeti and Jensen's not actually sponsoring this video. This video is sponsored by Element, which is an electrolyte hydration mix. I have like this long-term thing with Ibis. I used to work there for seven years. They used to sponsor me. Now in 2021, Ibis sponsored two individual videos on my YouTube channel here, but that's the extent of our relationship. They just sponsor the occasional standalone video. When the SB130 first showed up, I wasn't quite sure what to think about the bike and what to compare it to. First, I was kind of like, hey buddy, compare this bike to the little Ripley AF. They're both short travel trail bikes, right? But then Yeti said, nah, bro, compare it to your Ritmo. Well, you know what? Yeti was right. This thing does compare much more closely to the Ritmo than it does to the Ripley. Just for reference, I'm five foot eight, 170 pounds, and all my bikes are a size medium. Now, lately I have been riding my Ritmo V2 a lot and I really like that bike. And I'm gonna get to some comparisons between the SB130 Launch Ride and the Ritmo, Ritmo AF, Ripley AF, Occam LT, and the Evil Offering. But we're gonna do that later on in the video. You can look at the chapters down below if that's all you want to learn about with this video. Everyone's favorite topic, let's dive into the suspension. So the kinematics of the SB130 are really good. The rear end feels great. But what I really think is special about the SB130, it's not necessarily the kinematics, but it's the leverage ratio, which creates that amount of progression to the suspension. The bike has a somewhat firm feel, and the harder I push into the back of the bike, the more supportive it gets. For me, that's a really positive thing. I don't bottom the bike out easily on big landings, nor do I bottom it out on steep takeoffs, nor do I bottom it out when I'm slapping into corners. For me, that extra suspension progression has just been Excellent, and it's one of my favorite things about the SB130. I have not had to touch the Switch Infinity suspension with any maintenance issues at all since the bike showed up. Yeti, you guys did a great job when you picked out your progression to this back end. I did install a Cascade Components link into the rear suspension, and it softened up the initial part of the stroke a little bit. It might have made it a touch more progressive at the end. I had to add more shock pressure to it so that I wouldn't be sagged in too far. To me, the Cascade Link was not a game changer. Those really firm rear ends where you push into the bike and it rockets you forwards, or you push into it and then you can go up really high. I like that. Uh, with the Cascade Link, it just made it a little more active at the top so it felt a little bit plusher. You know, for me, that's not that big of a deal. I've never been one to really absolutely require the plushest suspension feel. I really like it when they ramp up and get firm so I can get upwards and have fun and play with the bike. Back home in the Pacific Northwest, it is heavily flooded. So I did what I like to do with all my problems. I ran away all the way down here to Southern California where it's 50 degrees warmer. As we're riding out here, it's a lot drier than back home in the Northwest and we are doing our best to stay hydrated. That said, we could use a little help. A big thanks to my friends from Element who've partnered with me to give me a little bit of support for this here YouTube channel. So Element makes a very simple electrolyte solution for your water bottle. It's just sodium, potassium, and magnesium with a tiny bit of stevia sweetening. And I really like putting one of these in my bottle and I supplement that with a full hydration pack full of water when I'm down here riding in the drier climates. For a limited time, all of you here on my channel can get a free Element sample pack. Uh, Element is asking $5 to cover shipping, but I've got a link in the description below over to the Element website where you can take advantage of that offer while supplies last. I've been using this Element Mix for a few months now and I've been really enjoying it and I think all of you will too. Today we're gonna drink the grapefruit salt and it's gonna be good. 
just what I need right now. For me personally, the geometry of a bike is far more important than the actual suspension performance. When I talk about suspension performance, I want something that'll help take care of mistakes and give me more traction, which the Yeti does really well. But you know what? All these bikes I've ridden in the last couple of years, the rear suspension has been pretty darn good. The main thing I notice is when a bike bottoms out too easily and then the bike is swinging around like a swing set and the geometry is changing a ton, that can be hard to predict. The way the Yeti rides, it's extremely balanced and that progressive rear end matches really nicely to the fork and I'm able to predict how the bike's gonna respond in a given situation. This is also partly why I'm such a terrible YouTube reviewer of mountain bikes. You see, I've got this very unique riding style that's super aggressive and I've also been riding for like over 25 years, so I'm relatively smooth. So the things that I look for in a bike might not be the things that are super important to you. I stand up a lot and I push the bike really hard. So you know what? If you make a $9,000 decision based on one nine minute YouTube video, please use my link down below. But if you're not gonna make your entire bike purchasing decision based on one video, then please leave me some sound financial device down in the comments just below. Let's chat about cornering for a minute. I feel the Yeti corners exceptionally well. And I don't think it's due to any single particular aspect or attribute or whatever. Uh, the way the Yeti feels, for me, it's very predictable. And a big part of that predictability comes from just how well balanced the bike is. And it's not like just one facet of balance I'm talking about here. The geometry is well done. There's nothing crazy with the numbers, but they are very well balanced. The balance I'm talking about when it comes to cornering, it's the sum of all those parts, but also the frame flex. So I'd heard that this bike was not the stiffest bike available. And you know what, it's not. My Ritmo, the carbon one, is definitely stiffer. But I think the way that the Yeti's stiffness works out is actually really good. So yes, it is softer than say the Ritmo AF where I complain about the flex. But what's cool about the Yeti, yes, it'll get to flex more, but the way it gets into that flex, it's more predictable and it's more consistent. You push harder, it'll give a little bit more, but it's never like wind up, wind up, and then whoosh, all of a sudden flex out of control. It's got this more progressive easing into the flex that I've actually enjoyed. And cornering is a great instance where that can help and be a little bit more forgiving. Whereas a stiffer bike, it'd be a little easier to slide out, a little easier to engage some chatter and get you kicked off the trail. Whereas that little bit of flex, that little bit of give can often be that little gray area you need to ride out of something that's kind of hairball. So let's talk about climbing. The Yeti climbs exceptionally well. The geometry is very comfortable for me, my body type, and my climbing style, which is generally going slow and sitting down. The seat tube angle is nicely steep. It is not so steep that when I get to a technical section of trail, I feel like I'm super high up in the air. A good example of how well the Yeti climbs. Um, this past summer, I did a huge motorcycle trip up to the back country of British Columbia, and I was gonna have some five to 6,000 foot days of elevation with like 20 to 30 miles. So big rides, big elevation, long climbs. I was looking at all my bikes, thinking which one should I take? It was kind of a no brainer. The Yeti was one of the best climbing bikes. And then when it comes to the descent, having a full 160 fork and that pretty darn good geometry, the Yeti is a really good bike for long uphills where you quite might not know what you're gonna encounter and then it can handle almost every downhill you're gonna find. So it's very well-rounded. And I picked to bring the SP130 on that ride and it was totally the right bike for that. That was killer. So let's dive into the parts a little bit. I pulled everything off and rebuilt it with my own usual parts. Shimano supplied me with an XT group set for the bike. Thank you, Shimano. So I put that on there. I have Shimano XT parts on almost all my bikes. That's what I'm used to. And I have my Industry 9 wheels, which we'll get to in just a moment. I tried a couple different one there. And then I use my PNW components cockpit and dropper seat post, which is what I have on all of my bikes. So yes, Shimano was sponsoring me with group sets. Yes, PNW and i9 were sponsoring me with their parts. But since I already have them on my half dozen bikes, it feels only fair to me to set up a long-term test bike the same as all the rest of my bikes. It's more apples to apples, and I know that stuff. When you're riding a new bike, you're not just feeling the frame, you're feeling the sum of all the parts. Now, I know some of you are gonna buy a stock bike and not change a thing, so once again, I am a terrible YouTube reviewer, and I'm not here to tell you different. 
But I did compare the frame back and forth with my other bike's frames. And at the end of the day, I think that's more important because there's so many different specs of bikes that you can get lost in the weeds pretty quick comparing all the various components. I will say this though, if you get a stock Yeti SB130 lunch ride with the GX group set, the DT Swiss wheels, the transfer dropper post, the race face cockpit, maybe it's the Yeti cockpit, I don't even know what the cockpit is. That stuff, it's all very high quality. I don't think you're gonna have any weird problems there. You're fine. One thing I do wanna to touch on, the SB130 uses the Press Fit 92 bottom bracket. It's been over 10 months now. Guess how many problems I've had with that Press Fit bottom bracket. You can't even count them on one hand because it's been zero. Yep, Press Fit 92 works fine in today's day and age, it's a-okay. Now, one thing I was gonna mention are wheels. <laughs> so, when I first got the bike, I threw on these 24 spoke Industry 9 Enduro 305 carbon wheels. 24 spokes, that's not a lot, but carbon rims, so they're still pretty stiff. I really liked those wheels on the Yeti, and the whole bike felt great. I tried some 32 spoke wheels on there, and those carbon rims are pretty stiff. When I had the 32 aluminum i9 spokes, which builds a very stiff wheel, when I had that on the Yeti frame, at that point, it didn't feel as balanced. But when I had the 24 spoke Enduro 305 wheels on there, they had a very similar feel to the rest of the frame. They weren't too flexy by any means. You can see my riding. If I was too flexy, I would not be pushing the bike as hard as I am. But the balance felt very natural. I'm gonna sign off on those things. They are good and they feel good on a bike like this. Issues. Problems, complaints. If you came here to hear the Ibis guy talk smack on the Yeti, well, this is your segment. One thing frustrated me with this bike quite a bit, and that was the lack of tire clearance. According to the literature, you can fit a 2.6 tire in back. According to my firsthand experiences, no go. So I ended up running a 2.4 rear tire at first, a WTB Trail Boss, and then I got these Maxxis tires and I threw an Aggressor 2.5 WT on back. And the 2.5 Aggressor, I have no complaints with it. It's been a great tire and it feels very appropriate for this bike, but I do wish I could fit a 2.6 in there because for some really rural off the grid trails, it's nice to have the extra volume there, but that's a minor nitpick. The 2.6 tires aren't nearly as popular as the 2.5s. Next complaint, this bike is expensive. It's a few hundred dollars more than the comparable Ibises and other brand bikes, it's, it's a lot. And right now we're at an interesting time where some brands have had to raise their prices and others have been delaying it for as long as possible, but everyone is gonna be increasing prices right now. There's an increase in demand, there's a decrease in supply. This is a challenging time. And there's also a ton of inflation. So we're gonna see prices across the board go up, but still the Yeti costs a bit more than the other comparable bikes. It's a great riding bike. Are you gonna make a decision on a $7,000 purchase based on a few hundred dollars? Probably not, but I'll go ahead and mention it. For those of you that are gonna do a frame only and build it up, this is probably more of an issue. Comparisons to the other bikes. Well, first up, the Ritmo V2. The Ritmo is definitely feels like more of a monster truck. It feels longer legged. Even though it's the same fork as the Lunch Ride, it's still, you can kind of tell it's a touch bigger bike. I don't remember the geometry offhand, but to me, the Ritmo rides like it's a little bit longer. It feels like it's a touch slacker and it feels like you can straight line through more stuff more easily. With that extra stiffness, it feels a little bit more bomber. So on more gnarly terrain, the Ritmo has an edge. However, the SB130 is, compared to the Ritmo, in my opinion, more well-rounded, and it'll work better on the easier trails and keep them still being quite fun, and it'll get you safely down the gnarlier stuff. Whereas on the Ritmo, to start to feel a little bit bored and overbiked on some of the easier trails. The Yeti is a little easier to turn than the Ritmo, a little easier to change direction with. The harder you push the Yeti, the more it'll let you go, the more it'll give you. On the Ritmo, I wish that bike was more progressive. The SB130 has a great leverage ratio, I'll give it that. Compared to the Ripley AF, the SB130 Lunch Ride, it feels, for me, it feels better. The Ripley AF feels like a smaller bike. Um, you end up kind of over that bike's limits more often. So where I live in the Northwest and coming down here to Sedona, I would rather ride the SP130 over the Ripley AF. That's just me though. Ripley AF is a 140-34 fork. Used to be a 130-34. Yeah, so it's kind of a different ballpark there. Ripley AF is a great bike, but the SP130 lunch ride, just a little bit more capable and it's gonna work in a wider variety of situations than the Ripley AF. But the Ripley AF is such a good bike, you know, like, 
If you just need a mountain bike and you can't afford an SP130, Ripley AF is a great way to go. I will say I prefer the Ripmo AF over the Ripley AF, so I will publicly say that. But then again, my experiences are not necessarily yours. I do really like the Orbea Occam, but it feels much smaller than the SB130, even though it has more travel, at least in back. For me, the Occam, it's the softer, plusher suspension feel, and it's a shorter bike. It feels more like there's more weight on the front wheel. To me, the Occam is a better, like, backwoods, gnarly trail bike. Not so much gnarly as in crazy steep, but just super chunky, like, not traditional mountain bike trail bike. That's the kind of riding I love to do. The SP130 is again more well rounded than the Occam, but on tighter, more technical trails, the Occam is really good and it has the edge in those scenarios compared to the Yeti. If your average trail speed is 20 miles an hour or faster, the Yeti better fit. If your average trail speed isn't quite as fast, if it's more like, you know, 15 miles an hour, which is very normal, then the Occam probably be just a neat little easier to handle and a little bit more fun and a little more forgiving if you do ride seated more often. The Evil offering is so different than the Yeti. Uh, the Evil is much softer in terms of suspension. It feels much more plush. It feels like you have more traction on the Evil. At the same time, the Evil isn't gonna feel as fast. You start pushing into the Evil and it's gonna articulate the back end and be cycling the suspension a lot more. The Evil is also feels to me, maybe it's because the suspension is getting into its stroke faster and more easily. But I caught a lot of pedals on the Evil, whereas the Yeti, it's more supportive. I didn't have a ton of pedal snag issues like I have had on the Evil. If I was riding like shuttle trails or bike parks, the Evil feels torsionally a little bit stiffer. Um, with the, I've got an angle set in my Evil and I've overforked it. So for me, my Evil offering, I would rather bring that if I had to do a bike park day and I was also doing some trail riding. Um, the Evil will shine kind of there in the more gnarlier stuff and it really needs like more mountain bikey trails. Whereas the Yeti, it can handle that stuff, but it'd also be a lot more fun when trails are mellower and easier. The offering is more of like a trail center, mountain bike specific trail zone bike. And then the Yeti is more of like a race bike. It's not gonna be quite as soft and forgiving, but it's gonna rock it forwards. And it's a lot of fun. They're both fun. I'd rather do a long climb on the Yeti than on the Evil. Admittedly, I came into this thinking that the Yeti was gonna be way too flexy and that it was gonna be weird and that I wouldn't get along with it, and I was totally wrong. This is a really good bike. Uh, it's the first Yeti I spent a lot of time on since my ASX in 2005, and man, I was very impressed with the Yeti. I have my full bike build spec'd out in the description below. Those are all affiliate links over to Jensen. Anything you purchase from Jensen will help me out, and that's how I make these videos happen. Thank you all for watching. Let me know your questions about the SB130 down below. And with that, I need to go pick my kid up. She's over at a friend's house playing, so I will see you guys in the comments down below. Please hit the subscribe button. More importantly, peace, everyone.